540? 580? What's the difference? That's what I'm gonna talk about today. Ever since Twisby announced that they were gonna be discontinuing their flagship pen, the Diamond 540, and replacing it with the Diamond 580, everybody's been wondering what is the difference gonna be between the two pens. Now, Twisby announced early on that it was just gonna be some minor tweaks and changes, uh, not any significant, you know, fundamental changes to the pen, and that is definitely true. Uh, but there are some subtle differences. I've been getting a lot of questions about all the details and things like that. Uh, so that's what this video is gonna cover, showing you all the differences between the design changes of the 540 going to the 580. The Diamond 580 is the pen that has replaced the 540. The 540 is a pretty popular pen. A lot of people know about it. A lot of people have it. Um, it's being replaced by the 580. There's not a drastic difference between the two. The packaging is exactly the same. You pull the pen out. It's got this nice box. Um, the one difference is it comes with instructions just like the 540 always did here. Shows you you know, how to fill and use the pen, some good pictures and stuff. Shows a story, the backstory of the 530, which was the predecessor to the 540. Um, similar model of pen, the 530, 540, and 580. Uh, just been some tweaks and improvements over the years. Uh, the one additional thing that the 580 dumps, does come with is this little pictorial, pictorial uh, that shows all the different parts. And then if you flip it over, it shows you what those parts are called. So that's kind of neat. Uh, just a little extra help there. It doesn't doesn't hurt. Of course, you're watching this video, and I'm going to show you more how to do anything, uh, show you how to do more than you ever thought possible with this pen. The uh, box that it comes in is very nice, very Apple-esque. Um, it's got, uh, you know, these plastic uh, kind of pieces of tape or something like that on the side. I already took one off the side there. I've already played with this pen. I'm just showing you how it's packaged. If you look on the underside, pull that part out. It's got a little ball of silicone grease there for you to keep your uh, you know, piston all greased up and everything. And then it's got a wrench, which comes with one side that's got this blue shrink wrap kind of stuff on it. Um, that you can peel off. But anyway, you pull out these little clips, and then you've got your pen, which is really what the whole point of all this is. So here I have the 580, and this is the 540. Just looking at the two, you can hardly tell there's much of a difference at all. But there are some subtle differences. I'm gonna go over all those uh, right now. So I'm gonna start with the cap. Okay, the cap is very similar between the two. It's got the Twisby logo here in the top. Zoom in a little bit, show you some of these details. Okay, so I got the Twisby logo there in the top. Looking at the side, the caps are very similar. Center band is the same, finial is the same. The only difference on the cap is the clip. It's not a drastic difference. Uh, the overall shape and everything is very similar. It just has these two little kind of indented flattened parts that kind of create this triangle effect on the new 580. That's a change from the 540. It's not drastic. Uh, I know some people prefer the old one. Personally, I don't really care too much one way or another. It's not a diff drastic enough difference for me. Um, the center band is the same, both engraved with the Twisby logo. And then if you turn them around, one says 540, obviously. The other one says 580. Uh, and that's the only difference on the caps. Now, I will break the caps out back in a second because there's another part of the pen that affects the cap just a little bit. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, the cap is the same. Now, looking at the two pens, I'm going to start at the nib and work my way down to the other end of the pen. So, starting at the nib, the nibs are going to be just a little bit different. Um, previously, the nibs were made by Bach in Germany on the 540. They are transitioning over to Yovo, also made in Germany. Uh, I've been told by Twisby that the nibs are supposed to perform the same. Uh, I know there are some questions about the nib quality and things like that because the VAC 700, one of their other pens, uh, had some issues with some of the Bach nibs uh, flowing well. And so they've transitioned over to Yovo there, but this is a different nib altogether than what's used on the VAC 700. And they really didn't have any problems with this nib. Um, so there really shouldn't be too much of a difference. I'm not going to cover over all the writing in this video. This is really more of just an overview of the pen design elements and stuff. Um, but uh, it's something to point out. 
Moving over to the grip section, this is probably going to be more of the noticeable part of the differences here. Um, there were some issues, and this is part of the reason that Twisby went through these design changes. Uh, there were some issues with uh, some cracking uh, on the grip section especially. Uh, I know this particular one that I have, I've got a couple of fissures, there's one, uh, I got another one right there. It was not drastically uh, uncommon, mainly because um, if you look at how this thing is assembled, it's got these little uh, protrusions here that are supposed to fit inside these notches that are cut inside the grip section. And if you rotate it a little bit, it'll kind of drop down in there. Uh, it's got an O-ring to kind of hold it in place a little bit, but it's supposed to fit in there. Uh, of course, if you have it misaligned and you push it in, it'll still go and it'll fit more snugly, actually. So it kind of feels like that might be how it's supposed to go to fit snug, but really you're supposed to line it up with those, um, and I think that was part of the cracking uh, issues. I know in my earlier days, I wasn't aligning them properly, and I was just kind of jamming it on there however it wanted to go. I imagine that that was part of the issue with some others as well. Um, and then, you know, this part just screws onto the pen. The grip section itself actually doesn't have a lot of pressure on it one way or another because it's really just the nib unit. And this is uh, on the 530, 540, and 580. It's really the nib unit that screws into the pen. So that grip section is really nothing more than an outer shell that fits around so that you don't have to you know, hold this skinny little part of your pen. But there are some definite design changes uh, that happened from the 540 to the 580. Okay, so here's the 580. So I'm gonna take this grip section off and show you how it works. So first thing you'll notice is the actual plastic portion of the grip section is quite a bit shorter. Whoa, this nib's wanting to go crazy on me. Okay, uh, so let me pull off the 541 and show you how much longer uh, it looks. So there is a difference between the two. So that's pretty noticeable. Um, and I think a lot of the cracking issues probably happened on this part that flared up near the end. I know that's where the cracks are on mine. Uh, and so they've kind of just chopped that off. So that's probably a good move on their part. I'm sure they did a lot of testing and stuff. Uh, and they replaced it with this metal, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Ring. I'll call it a ring. Uh, so this plastic part kind of fits around that inner portion of the metal. And then that metal part has the notches in it, fits onto the nib section, still got the O-ring on there. And that is what aligns up and fits into place. Okay, so that part is not going to crack. I can guarantee you that. Uh, so that should eliminate, you know, a lot of the problems that they had with the grip sections of the old 540s. So um, the other small change they made, and I don't really know how much of a difference this will make, but I'm sure there's a reason that they did it, uh, is that the O-ring, you see there's a, a black O-ring right here. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with the body or the way that the pen actually writes. Uh, that has to do with the cap. So uh, that little O-ring is just meant to kind of mate up to the end of the threads inside the cap so that when you screw it together, you can see that O-ring is there. You screw it together and you kind of ratchet it down just a little bit and that O-ring is gonna kind of seal it up and keep your nib wetter. Uh, it's a little bit thicker on the 580 than it is on the 540 and the difference is very, very subtle. I doubt you can even tell unless you have the two right next to each other. Let's see if I can get it. Okay, the difference is very subtle uh, but you know it's worth pointing out. And while we're right there, you might be able to notice that there's a difference um, with the, let me see, let me get something behind it here. There's a difference with the clear plastic portion. So it's got kind of these two ribs here. I imagine it has to do with how the pen assembled or something like that. Um, but on the 580, it's a little clearer. So if you like to see the ink and you like to see as much inside your pen as possible, uh, the 580 is gonna be a little bit improved over the 540 there. Um, so the 540 is a little bit cloudier there and has kind of these two ribs there. Uh, and that is now gonna be gone. So not really of much consequence, but there it is. Uh, the ink capacities in the two is going to be uh, basically the same, uh, depending on you know how you fit the the um, mechanism inside there, you can actually unscrew it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But uh, the parts are gonna be pretty much identical. There's not gonna be any noticeable difference in the incapacity of the two. That was not uh, really any factor in this redesign. The next thing to point out, all, all the internal mechanisms are the same. Uh, the next thing to point out here is that there is, uh, on the 540, 
there's a metal uh, bushing, I guess I'll call it that. If you allow me to remove this. Inside the pen here, this uh, mechanism threads into this metal bushing that is glued. Oh, sorry, I'm way out of frame. This metal piece here that is glued inside the pen. And I did hear of a couple of accounts of this glue giving in this metal part kind of popping out. Uh, the way that they have dealt with that is they now uh, have the mechanism threading directly into the pen on the 580. They've completely bypassed that whole uh, metal ring part. So if you pull out the mechanism on the 580, you'll notice there is no metal. It's just plastic. It's threaded right in there. The mechanism threads in. And I'll show you the mechanism here is exactly the same for the two. I've pulled it out and completely disassembled it. It may vary a little bit pen to pen based on how the parts will fit together, uh, but you're not going to notice any drastic difference between the two. Uh, and then the last thing really to point out is that if you look on the cap, or sorry, the uh, filler, the filler knob, there is a metal ring around the lower portion of the filler knob. And I believe that it's mainly aesthetic. I don't really personally see uh, that it has much of a function. I would imagine if there's any function to it at all, it's for crack resistance. Uh, I didn't personally hear of anyone having a problem with their filler knob cracking at all. I heard of a few accounts of the body, mainly the grips, um, but I didn't, re didn't really hear of a problem with the knobs. Uh, but there's that metal ring there anyway. I imagine it was kind of an aesthetic thing. I know one thing that a lot of people were curious about with the 580 is because of that metal ring, I think that people were thinking that maybe there was going to be some difference in the way that the cap would post. Uh, and I can say that there is not. That was not a factor in this redesign. Uh, so here is the cap on the 580, uh, and it posts onto the pen like so. The metal ring really has nothing to do with it, and you can still uh, spin the knob freely even with that cap on. Um, the 540 really wasn't designed by Twisby to be postable, and the pen is actually quite long. I have very large hands, and when I hold it posted, it really sticks out like a flagpole. Um, I personally don't write with this pen posted, and I post just about everything. Um, it adds a lot of weight to the back, makes the pen incredibly long. I don't find it particularly comfortable, and it wasn't really designed that way. Now, of course, physically it can be done. So yes, you can do that. So you'll probably see it advertised as postable uh, in a lot of reviews and online sellers and stuff like that, uh, but really that's not how Twisby designed it. Uh, so I'll go ahead and post the 540 as well, just so you can see that there's really not any difference between how the two post. So there you go. So I got the 540 on the bottom, 580 on the top. Really no difference at all. The cap is exactly the same except for that little uh, silver ring there. So, um, you know, some changes for the better. Uh, I believe that they're going to, you know, not have uh, probably as many cracking issues as they've had in the past. Uh, if you do have a cracking issue or anything with any of your Twisby pens, uh, definitely send an email to twisbyinc at gmail.com and they will help you out. They're some of the best, uh, you know, most responsive manufacturers around in terms of warranty claims. So uh, definitely send an email there and they, they can help you out. Uh, but now you should at least have a better idea of what's going on with the difference between the 540 and the 580. If you have any other questions about the 580, the 540, or anything else for that matter, fountain pen related, just hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, my blog, and I'm happy to help you out. Thanks so much for watching today, and right on. <music>